the more I cover this person, the more it seems like they do, so it seems like the more I have to cover them. Yet again, I'm finding myself doing a video on Jessica Yaniv. But before I say any more on her, I would like to thank everyone for the immense support on this channel lately. I know it would be a risk covering this subject and making a video or two a day, but it seems to have been the right call. You have no idea how long I debated doing it because I didn't want to spam you guys. Then it hit me, the reason I started this channel in the first place. I needed a place for me to vent, a place where I could channel my energy. I never expected to get an audience, like, at all. So you're all a bonus. I don't mean that in, the dis in a disrespectful way. I I'm grateful for the audience I have, but I make videos primarily as a way for me to cope with things, like my disability, etc. Now back onto the subject at hand. In case you missed my other videos on that, I'll link the playlist below, along with the twitters of Ian Miles Chong and Celine Ryan, the author of the article I'm about to cover. But now onto the meat of the video, after all I've rambled too much, as I tend to do. It's not even to get that sweet sweet ad revenue since YouTube took monetization away from me. Which by the way if you want to help me keep this channel afloat, link to Streamlabs and my Patreon are down below. Any support no matter how big or small is appreciated and I'm grateful for. Now without further ado, let's actually get into the video shall we? Jessica Yaniv's trouble in history goes beyond forcing genital waxing. Yaniv has a disturbing past of engaging in explicit sexual conversations with minors. After a Canadian transgender woman made headlines last week for attempting to use the law to force female aestheticians to wax her male genitalia, additional disturbing details continue to surface. These include explicit conversations with minors about their menstrual cycles, an attempt to share child pornography, and weaponized lawsuits against beauty pageants. State and full sexual assault. Public attention first turned to Jessica Yaniv after she filed complaints with British Columbia Human Rights Tribunal accusing 15 waxing professionals of transphobia for refusing to wax her male genitalia. The tribunal is currently reviewing these cases and deciding whether a female wax specialist should be forced by law to handle male genitalia. Although the, although the government has not yet decided whether it will side with Yaniv, some of these business owners are already being forced to shut down as a result of the complaints. Ironically enough, Yaniv recently tweeted her disgust at having to view male genitalia without consenting to do so. Apparently she believes this to be different than forcing, waxing, than forcing a waxing professional to handle hers. After the controversy began to spark conversation, Yaniv publicly doubled down on her position that refusal to perform Brazilian wax services on male genitalia is discrimination against transgender individuals. That now seems unwise during a live appearance on Infowars Alex Jones show, Jones confronted Yaniv with evidence of her engaged in an inappropriate conversation with her underage girls. Yaniv denied the accusations and claimed that the screenshots and statements provided by alleged victims were all fabricated by anti-LGBTQ activists. The accusations The various accusations against Yaniv include an account from a young woman named Jessica Rumpel who furnished extensive evidence that Yaniv repeatedly engaged with her in inappropriate and abusive sexual conversations online while she was between the ages of 14 and 15. In an exclusive interview with Canadian outlet The Post Millennial, Rampel explained that even though her initial online interaction with Yaniv was disturbing and uncomfortable, Yaniv manipulated her into maintaining contact with her by claiming to suffer from folliculitis and depression. I think I managed to get that correct. Yay, me. I always wanted to be there for anyone who suffered, who was suffering, anyone who needed someone to listen to them, explained Rampel. But she says her conversations with Yaniv were often completely inappropriate. At the time, Yaniv did not identify as transgender. The young girl believed Yaniv to be simply a strange man who fetishized periods, women's bathrooms, bathrooms and women's clothing. Yaniv also told me that she use, he uses pads and wants to go into the ladies' bathroom. He asked me how to go into the ladies' bathroom without being caught and then how to be in the bathroom if there was a lot of women and girl, or girls, she said. He even asked me to go what, uh, what stall to go in. One screenshot provided by Ron Pell reveals that Yaniv sent her a picture modelling girls' jeans, asking her if she thought, she thought it was weird and attempting to solicit compliments from her. Others show Yaniv making overtly sexual comments to Rumpel, including statements 
like I can't wait till you turn 16. At one point Yeniv asked ask one pal to send pictures of her used tampons. Yaniv says that uh, one pal says that Yaniv would often send her sexual voice messages using an Elmo voice. One pal's interview points to a specific audio clip where Yaniv can be heard saying obscene things about one pal's body and suggesting they engage in intercourse. Shortly after her interview interview with the Post Millennial, one pal filed a child exploitation report with the Canadian Centre for Child Protection. Other individuals have since come forward with similar and even more disturbing accusations. A young woman named Ashley Smith claims that Yaniv uh, Love lured her into communication by presenting as a manager for a teen pop group from which Smith was a fan. Yaniv was really strategic. They knew the fans of this band would jump up on any opportunity to try and meet them or get close to them. That's exactly what I wanted, Smith told the post millennial. Yaniv had me wrapped around their finger. Smith says Yaniv manipulated her into cyberbullying of another fan of the band, a young girl from Paris named Louise Nasek. Yaniv then uh, facilitated and encouraged ongoing drama and cyberbullying between the two. Smith's account of their, her relationship with Yaniv is similar to Rampel's, with screenshots showing Yaniv inquiring about menstruation how she asks young girls for feminine hygiene products and whether or not to be acceptable to stand outside women's bathrooms solicita uh, soliciting pads or tampons. One screenshot provided by Smith shows Yaniv asking Smith if she wants to see some kid porn that Yaniv supposedly accidentally clicked on. Wanted to see, Yaniv asked. A number reveals Yaniv telling Smith that if you are two years older, I'd, you know, with you. Yaniv later asked her if she would date a guy who wore pads. Smith has said that she plans on filing a formal police report against Yaniv this week. The current waxing stunt is just one of many Yaniv has tried to pull over the years. Yaniv is no stranger to filing complaints with various tribunals. One 2018 blog post points, to out the, points out that a quick scrape of Yaniv's Twitter account for the word complaint reveals a plethora of frivolous grievances to various companies including an abusive hotel and argumentative, argumentative Vistaprint employees. Earlier this year, Yaniv filed suit against Canadian beauty pageant for its humiliating policy of only allowing biological females to compete. But that uh, before that case was even has even been resolved, Yaniv has now launched a GoFundMe page to run for yet another char uh, Canadian beauty pageant. Yaniv has also received backlash for petitioning her town of Langley, which is Columbia, to allow LGBTQS plus organisations to ho host topless swim parties at community pools for children as young as 12. The petition requested that only LGBTQS plus individuals be allowed in these events and that parents and caretakers will be prohibited from attending these events as it's considered safe and inclusive. Yaniv's uh, 15 minutes of infamy are far from over. As more details come into surface about her character and background, it's time the Canadian authorities take these allegations against Yaniv seriously. But what's the betting they won't? After all, she's just a poor transgender woman trying to make it in the world that's bigoted against her. I've, that's basically that's basically how the left are viewing her. Uh, you've got people that are still coming out supporting her, and she's thanked them herself. Like, how can anyone support this? It's clear as day, with evidence, screenshots, etc, etc, that she's a creepy individual. I say she because I know some people in my comment section still say he. That's up to them. I say she because, well, it's easier for me Otherwise, I'd be confused as fuck and wouldn't be able to do these videos because my brain would be all over the place. That's one of the drawbacks of being dyslexic. Your main brain has to focus on things because if you keep switching back between he, she, whatever, they, them, whatever, it fucks you over. Now, I'd like to say thank you to, obviously, Human Events for allowing me to cover this and to Imar Chong specifically because he gave me the permission to cover this and thank you to Celine Ryan for obviously 
write in the article. It's a very concise point of what's happened so far. And with more and more accusations and evidence and stories coming out against her, I will continue to cover them. Not because it's getting me views or anything, but because I like to cover things to their in, in their entirety. Like I did with the uh, Bethnal Green situation, where a man was uh, broken into and uh, someone attempted to kill him, but he managed to get the screwdriver off of him and the person who tried to rob him ended up dead. He was arrested and charged with murder, but as I followed it into its entirety, they dropped the charges against him because they found it was self-defence in his own home. So I'll do the same here. As long as this case happens, I will follow it and I will make videos on it. This sort of thing needs to be called out. I know quite a few trans people who do not agree with this. They comment on my videos all the time that they, she does not represent uh, trans people. Like one person said that they're transgender. This per they believe this person isn't trans at all. They're just using it as an excuse, to, as a power grab, as a way to uh, inf uh, basically force people to do what they want them to do. And they're basically just using the trans label as a way as they get out of free jail because they know p no one wants to offend transgender people. But, as I've stated many a time, no one is above mockery, no one is above offence, no one is above making fun of, no one's above critique, scrutiny, criticism, all of that stuff. No one is above it, no matter who you are. Like the other day, you got people asked, say, uh, saying to me, you're an MRA, so you must uh, so you must believe men, etc, etc. And you mustn't scrutinise them. It's like, where do you think, where do you get that idea from that just, cause, just because I'm an MRA doesn't mean I won't scrutinise, criticise, or... Uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? I don't know. I'll call out men. Like, I I will do it even more to those people because I'm an MRA, because I expect men to be better. <sighs> oh, anyway, thank you for watching. As I said in the beginning, uh, links to everything will be down in the description below, including Patreon and Streamlabs. Go follow Celine and Ian. They're great people. I follow them. It's it. They put out some very good tweets, some shit posts, but you know, that's what everyone does. Also, go follow me. Link is in the description below as well. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Remember, guys, if you like what I do, remember to hit that subscribe, like buttons, and consider supporting me on Patreon or buying some merch from my Public store. Links to those will be in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.